In this video, I'll show you how to stabilize the edge of a fabric hat brim. This is different than a hat like the boater, which is stabilized along the brim with buckram and a heavy wire. In order to understand this technique, you have to know how to pattern and construct a hat brim. I will have a link in the description below for my bucket hat videos on patterning and construction. That way you have all the steps in between the ones I will not be covering in this video. I suggest you watch those videos before beginning this one. I will only be covering the necessary steps for completing this technique in this video. This technique yields a flexible but still stabilized outer hat brim edge. This technique works on symmetrical and asymmetrical hat brims. It does not work very well for outer hat brim edges that are shaped with scallops or points. To use this technique, we create a channel on the outer edge and fill it with a wire. I'm going to show you two different wires that can be used in this process, neither of which are metal. The first wire is called brim lock. It is a professional millinery wire and available at professional millinery wire suppliers. It's available in a few different thicknesses. It's flexible and can easily be formed into a loop to stabilize an outside edge. Brimlock also has joiners that will help you join two edges together, although for this technique, it's not necessary to have a joiner. Brimlock is a wonderful material that can be used on a variety of fabric hats. Its only drawback is that it has to be purchased from a millinery supply store. The next material can be purchased at any sewing supply store. This is called Rigeline boning. It's a lightweight boning that is typically used in strapless garment construction. It's comprised of a casing that holds several plastic whales on the inside. These whales are in effect lighter weight versions of brim lock wire. We can strip the casing and use the wire to stabilize the outer edge of our hat. With fabric scissors, you're going to cut the stitching in between the individual whales of the boning. You can just glide the scissors through and it cuts very easily. For lightweight hats, you only need two individual whales. For heavier fabric, you might need to use up to four, or just use Brimlock, which is a lot more stable for heavier fabrics. You can buy Rigeline by the yard or by the bale. If you're going to be making a lot of hats, you can completely strip all the Rigeline that you buy at one time, or just do it as you need it. You can get a lot of wired edges out of just a few yards of Rigeline boning and makes it a little bit more cost effective than buying Brimlock. Now let's focus on the brim pattern itself. Complete the pattern through taking out excess on the outer edge. At this point, we would normally move the seam to the side. You can still do that, but I'm going to show you how to eliminate two seams and just have one. The only seam on the brim will be at center back. Once you've gotten to this point, go ahead and add your seam allowance. Add main construction seam to center back and the head size line and a quarter inch on the outer edge. Do not add seam allowance at center front. On a new sheet of paper with enough room for two halves of the pattern, draw a straight line in the middle. Along that straight line, flip the pattern over and trace the outer edge of the pattern. It helps to tape down the center front edge so the paper doesn't slide around. Lining up the center front edge with the trace you just made, tape down the center front line against the straight line. This will give you one continuous pattern piece with a seam at center back. Cut out the paper pattern, and you're going to cut two of fashion fabric and two of interfacing. If you want an even more stable brim, use a heavier interfacing. If you haven't already done so, label center front and center back. Cut out your fabric, sew the seam, and top stitch as desired. We need to eliminate the excess fabric beyond the top stitching on the inside of the brim. This helps the wire pass through that seam more easily. You only need to trim on the outer edge of the hat brim. Do this to both sides of the top stitching. Add 
Estimate how much wire you'll need for the outer edge by measuring the wire against the outer edge. You do need to have at least a couple of inches where the wire overlaps from the beginning. When in doubt, just make the wire a little bit longer than you think you need. To make the wire more accessible to the channel we're going to stitch, we need to get the two ends together. You can melt the two ends together with a lighter and just get it to where they are stuck together. It doesn't have to be like a super permanent bond. But basically what you're doing is just melting the plastic to get it to stick together. You don't have to do this step, but it does make it easier to slide the wire through the channel we're about to sew. Match the two seams together at the seam allowance, right sides together, and pin. Sew the outer edge and then press flat. Sew one quarter away from the outer edge of the brim. Start sewing towards the back and leave an opening in between the beginning and the end of the stitch. Feed the melted end of the wire into the open channel. Just keep inching it along until you fill the wire into the channel all the way around to the beginning. As you gather the fabric, smooth it out by holding the wire with one hand and then pulling the rest of the fabric along the other end. Eventually, you'll start to feed in the wire all the way around the edge of the hat. When you get to the seam, Press in the seam on the edge to form a little bit of a hollow that the wire can fit into more easily. We did trim all that seam allowance and this just helps make it easier for the wire to pass through. When you get to the end of the stitching, just keep pushing the wire along that outer edge, even through the unstitched channel to the other side of the stitching, and just keep feeding it through until you fed in all the wire all the way around. Make sure all the wire is inside along that outer edge. Use your fingers to push it closer towards the edge, and now you're going to continue stitching the rest of that channel. Use your fingers to push it against the edge if your presser foot isn't doing it for you. Backstitch at the beginning and the end of this stitching. Once you've completed the stitching, the wire is now secure on the outside edge. At this point, you can do any channel stitching that you want on the brim. Follow the instructions in the provided link to the bucket hat construction video for more information on this stitching. At this point, the brim is ready to be attached to the crown. This wire technique allows the hat to be flexible, but at the same time still stabilizes the edge so it doesn't flop down over the eyes. This wire allows the hat to be washed either by hand or machine. I suggest you use cold water and do not put this in the dryer. Let it hang to dry. Too much heat can warp the wire. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please be on the lookout for more millinery surface design and construction videos in the near future.